It's fall, and that means pumpkins. What do you think these little guys are made of? If you didn't say chickpeas, then you're wrong. But that's okay. Who does this? At least one person. There was a reason, though. Two years ago, I wanted to make a pumpkin truck that was possessed by an evil pumpkin vine. But I didn't have a 3D printer. I have no idea why I tried chickpeas, but they did the trick. Just need a few tools. And the most obscure one is going to be this V gouge, but if you've seen any of my recent videos, I've been getting a lot of use out of this set. The good thing about chickpeas, or garbanzo beans, is that they have a very uneven texture and shape, which is similar to a pumpkin. We just need to accentuate some of these grooves. That's where the V gouge comes in. Now, if you do this, please be careful of your fingers, but you don't really need to push that hard. Once the grooves are put in place, I take my pin vise and I drill a hole for the stem. Now, once there's a small hole for the stem to go in, I take a couple larger drill bits and wallow out a hole in the top to give it a nice slope so it's not just a stark hole straight down. This next step can be a little bit annoying, but you need to take the outer skin off of the beans. For the stem, I'm gonna use a toothpick I like it to be pointy on the bottom, and I'm using a hacksaw blade to texture the stem. Now I just put it in place and use some super glue to attach it. Keeping the pointy end of the stick means I can jab all these little guys right into some foam. This gives you a nice hands-free way of painting them, well, an orange color. I mixed up a nice pumpkin orange and gave them their base color. Now this next step doesn't necessarily have to be done in the same way, but you're going to want to add some color with a wash. Now I'm using this ink, and I'm just dipping the whole pumpkin into the ink, and then wiping the excess off on this paper towel. You can use an acrylic wash or an enamel wash, whatever you have on hand. I would suggest a dark brown though. Black would probably be too dark. After painting up the stem with a green and later on mixing a little bit of brown in, I gave them all a coat of matte varnish. Once that varnish is on there to seal everything in, I have this lineup of nice little pumpkins. Now, it took me a while to come up with a way to showcase these pumpkins on a little diorama, but we're gonna start with a cork coaster and some pine bark to give a little exposed cliff edge. And I used some XPS foam to bulk out the rest of the shape. Now, for some reason, I thought I could glue down these little pieces of foam with the Mod Podge, but it didn't really work. So I got out my super beat up dollar store hot glue gun and I started bulking out some slopes and bumps. Once everything was shaved into a nice shape I coated it with a Mod Podge and paint mixture followed by some rocks and sand with watered down PVA to lock everything in. And the next step was going to be adding the soil. Now this stuff is called coconut coir. It's basically ground coconut fiber and it is amazing for basing soil. After applying it, I hit it with some isopropyl alcohol to allow that glue to soak in. And I hit the edge of that exposed cliff with some gray paints, working up lighter and lighter with dry brushes. And now that we have the soil, uh, it's time to add some grass. These are my sawdust flocks. I'm getting a lot of mileage out of these. I wanted to keep it patchy so you could see some soil showing through, but still get some good coverage. Now, the vines. I'm using some floral wire, and luckily this floral wire is coated in a brown paper. So I put one end in my pin vise, the other in a pair of pliers, and twist it around in an ununiform way. There's no real rhyme or reason to how I made these vines, the shape anyways, 
But the good thing about using wire is I can form it to the shape of the slope after the fact. I made a second branch of this vine and I twisted them together. Of course I added some glue in there as well. But gluing the pumpkins along the vine in natural positions, I was able to get this nice distribution. And I thought the base was a little bit simple, so I added some toothpick fence posts. These are textured and painted in a similar way to the stems of the pumpkins themselves. I thought it would be cool for the vine to be wrapping around one of the posts. And once the pumpkin vines were in place and glued, I added some yellow flock that was slightly larger and then sealed everything in with a spritz of isopropyl and then some watered down PVA. I thought that was looking pretty nice, but it still wasn't enough. So I grabbed some of the offcuts from the zombie floor cloche diorama that you may have seen in my last video, split them in half thickness wise, and made a makeshift fence that's been falling down. I printed out some ravens here in multiple poses that I could put around the diorama. This flying raven was pretty fun to make. It has a very short length of clear monofilament fishing line that's holding it into the air. And once those were glued in place, this thing was done. I gotta tell you, recently these dioramas that I've been making are so addictive. There's something so magical about making a little world out of almost nothing. And speaking of making something out of nothing, it was absolutely humbling and thrilling that after I launched my Patreon page, these wonderful people came to support what I'm doing here. And I can't thank you enough. So I'd like to introduce the very first patrons of BP Custom Creations. We have... Jimmy G, Andrew Price of Maple Leaf Customs, Michael Doherty, Gerald, Sean White, and Spaghetti a la Mode. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting what I'm doing. It really motivates me to know that you guys got my back. That's all for this one, guys. Go out and make something spooky this month, and I'll see you on the next build.